or engage in non-ethical monogamy. Not ethical <laughs> monogamy. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Horrible. That was so funny. Like not ethical monogamy is like literally cheating. The total opposite. We're all cheaters. We're yeah. all cheaters. We're, We're all, cheaters. all cheaters. I think the happier we all are, mm -hmm. unless it, unless you're happy with cheating, <laughs> maybe don't do that. If you like the secrets, that's I don't know. That's you. Maybe you will find someone who's cool with that. Maybe there's maybe that's an option too. Yeah, maybe there's some role player or something, who some kink oh, or yeah. something. You know? Yeah. yeah who sure knows? That I think that's a, I think that's the biggest thing. People are like, oh, I could never, I could never trust my partner enough for it to be like in an ethical mind. I'm like, some of you don't trust your partners now. <laughs> you know who you are, ladies. I just, if any of my friends watch this, it's fair. Hey. Say him, yeah. Like for the most part, yeah. Like, hey. Yeah. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. All right. I did not prepare an introduction, but it should be fine. Okay. Welcome back. Welcome <laughs> back. Hi. Um, I'm Wafa. I'm not sure if you remember me, but I'm the director for SOPO, and we've been quiet for a while for the entire semester because we were busy organizing events for the campus, but we're back. Mm -hmm. And with new people who you would be very excited to get to know. Um, so before I let these people int introduce themselves, I'm Wafa. My pronouns are they, he, she. I'm a graduating senior uh, studying economics and gender studies, so. Hi, I'm Victoria. My pronouns are she, her. I'm currently a second year studying human development and family studies, and like 30 other majors are also on my mind, so don't, don't hold me to that anytime soon. And yeah, I'm a part of Wood Sopo, kind of a new member, and I'm excited to be here. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Thomas. I'm a... Uh, my pronouns are he, him. I'm a, a fifth year PhD student in political science. I study gender and international security. Uh, but I'm also uh, the graduate student advisor for the Society and Politics Committee. So I've been behind the scenes quite a bit this year, and this is the first time uh, I'll have been on camera. So happy to be here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been waiting to get Thomas to be on the show because like, he's been the backbone of a lot of our like more queer-centered events and programs. So. It's probably your first time seeing him, but yeah, he's the backbone of Sopa. So, um, so today we are talking about polyamory and queer sexuality. So I've gathered some friends, people who I know who are familiar or are part of like the or identify as polyamorous or part of the polyamory community or engage in non-ethical monogamy. Not. Ethical, <laughs> not ethical, not ethical. <laughs> not ethical. That's cheating. But ethical yeah. non-monogamy. Uh, let me get that right. Um, <laughs> that sounded so horrible. That was so funny. Like not ethical monogamy is like literally cheating. The total opposite. We're all cheaters. Yeah. We're all cheaters. We're all cheaters. All cheaters. Um, <laughs> Well, I mean, that actually leads into, you know, like, people tend to think that, like, people who are ethically non-monogamous or exactly. polyamorous are cheaters. So maybe right. that's a way to, like, you know, kind of the transition into... The segue to our first question. First um, I guess we all have our own kind of definitions, but we uh -huh. also have, like, yeah. consensual definition. Yeah. But I, to me, um, ethical non-monogamy is when... Traditionally, in my opinion, like it's when you have like a primary partner and you casually date outside or you have sexual partners outside of your relationship, mm -hmm. but your partner definitely 100% knows about it. It's not like some sneaky like, oh, like I'm going to do this on the side and then I'm going to say I'm polyamorous so I can get away with it. That's definitely not how it works. It's a lot of work and it takes conversations to make mm -hmm. sure you each party feels like secure and trustworthy and there's a lot of complicated feelings. But yeah, yeah. for a lot of people it is worth it in the end. So. What is it to you? Yeah, I mean, you know, it can be so many different things, and so, like, one thing that I've um, learned about ethical non-monogamy in the time that I've been, uh, that I've been ethically non-monogamous is that so many people have so many different definitions of it. So it could be that some ethical non, you know, ethically non-monogamous relationships really have, you know, that, like, clear communication and active communication, and I've seen some relationships where people actually don't want to know about it, right? They're fine with their partners doing whatever, but they just don't want to hear anything about it. So. The, the core thing, though, is that there's some sort of um, prior understanding between two or more people, right, that um, sort of, for lack of a better term, like sort of govern the relationship, right, that provides some sort of standard of, of behavior, right? And it's, it's the same thing that would happen in a monogamous relationship, right? The only difference is in a non-monogamous relationship, 
you just have more than one partner. But like the same like core commitment is there. Mm -hmm. It's just there's more people involved potentially. Right. Um, yeah. So like I think for me, both of these definitions that both of you provide are the more the definitions that try to explain like non-monogamy uh, non as like an approach to relationships. But mm -hmm. it could also be like an identity. Mm -hmm. So that's like more of how I identify with polyamory is because I see myself as a polyamorous person. Like I think I like the idea, I, I enjoy knowing that I could develop like sexual and romantic relationships with more than one person at the same time. Mm -hmm. And that in some way ties a lot into like my philosophy as a person, uh, so on and so forth. Like we could like, I could develop more on that in the later questions. But yeah, it could also be an identity. Yeah, so I mean, one thing that I, I'll, I'll mention is, you know, we're sort of conditioned in the society into being monogamous, right? I remember when I was like 23 or 24, and I was reading, surprisingly enough, it was an ESPN the magazine, and I read about this, this star yes. NBA player, yeah, Andrei Karolinko, who's a, a Russian player, and there was this little, like, blurb about how him and his, uh, he and his wife, uh, who I don't know her name, but she, but she was a, um, like a model or something, and they both travel a lot for their jobs. And they had an agreement where they could um, sleep with or have, you know, have some sort of relationship with three people per year, right? They didn't need to explain it or anything, right? And I remember reading that when I was 24 and thinking, wow. Three other that people? Is, yeah, three other people, right? And it was per year. Like, they just mm -hmm. had this sort of agreement. And, like, they, they were like, you know, we travel a lot. We don't see each other a ton sometimes. And so, like, but we know that we each have these other needs, right? And I just thought, wow. Why is nobody, why is this the first time I'm really like being exposed to this in ESPN the magazine of all things, right? <laughs> At age 24. Um, and then a few years later, I ended up um, meeting somebody who was in an ethically non monogamous relationship. Um, she had a primary partner, and I started dating her, and it, it just became this very, um, you know, sort of loving and supportive, um, probably like the best on-ramp one could expect to have into ethical non-monogamy. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, again, what it is for me, right? I really appreciate having this, you know, primary partner, something that is, is very akin to what people in monogamous relationships um, expect the relationship to be. Mm -hmm. But then I also like to have those additional relationships on the side. They can be, you know, serious or they can be not serious. They can be long-term, they can be short-term, they can right. be anything. But it's still about, for me, that core one person that I want mm -hmm. to be with, right? The, like, yeah. the, the primary partner. Right. So yeah, what is it for either of you? Um, for me, yeah, it's a very much like a cultural idea, I guess. I think the first time I learned about non-monogamy, non I've definitely heard of non-ethical non-monogamy. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. definitely been something I'm not, I'm not gonna say I'm familiar with. I'm not familiar with that. <laughs> but yeah, like um, I, my dad is from like the Congo and like a lot of the time it'll happen. Like you'll have like a, like a family here, a family here, a family here, but they'll know about each other or like multiple wives is common. Mm -hmm. And like, there's always, there was always this very American idea in my head, like all oh, the wives must be mad. You know, it's like, oh, you must want to be the favorite. Like it has to be like, there's probably like, a favorite one. That, and I, I don't know, I think that's a very immature way of thinking about people. Like don't think of yourselves as competing against others. Like once you get to that point, right. Like, you're not going to win because you can never be somebody else, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. And then I think, I don't remember, like, what class. I think it was probably an anthropology class I was taking, and they discussed this culture where it's, like, common for, like, a woman to have sex with, like, a lot of guys, like, on purpose, and not in the way, like, American culture describes it. Obviously, mm -hmm. we have, like, slut-shaming, and it's like, oh, you must be insecure, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But it, in that culture, it was, like, this woman has sex with a lot of men, and then they all take care of whatever kid she has. Like, they don't know whose kid it is, mm -hmm. but no one cares. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, like, this is our community. Like, this is... I don't know, like, we all have responsibility, even though, obviously, like, genetically, it's probably not all of our kids, you know what right, I mean? Yeah. And I heard about that, and I, I don't know, that, like, idea has always stuck with me that... I don't. I shouldn't have this like possessive mentality over people. Obviously, sometimes I do. As of right now, I am in a, mon in a monogamous <laughs> relationship. But like, I feel like it's a very cultural thing to be. Oh yeah, like this person is mine. This is the one. They have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Instead of seeing everyone as like everyone can add something to my life. And so I personally like. I don't think I've been emotionally ready to be in like an actual non-monogamous relationship just yet. But I've done. I've definitely like. As I've dated around, I've. You can obviously tell like. People are different and they add different things to my life so exactly. how could I just be like this one person mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is everything so yeah I don't know I definitely entertain the idea of being like oh like should I should I not and I've there's so been so many difficult my friends have been in open relationships it hasn't worked for them and it's always like oh, mm -hmm. right. is that just how it is or is it because they haven't done things right but yeah so I'm all very open to the idea I guess eventually 
Yeah. <laughs> um, for me, it's like a, it's kind of like a result of like, not a result, but kind of like something that I figured out after leaving a long-term LDR straight monogamous relationship and this was like prior to me fully realizing that I'm very queer um, and then I realized that a reason why I was not happy was because I felt like I was restricted to uh, being attracted to just one gender or like one person um, and because of that feeling of like feeling restricted I was like well maybe I should just like break up with this person and then date a girl but it's not as simple as that because mm -hmm. it's like what kind of girl or like I'm still attracted to men so it's kind of like very confusing for a while because I was like I am not really happy with this idea of just like focusing on one person and thinking that they like you said fulfill uh, my needs as a person like a lover um, so it has a lot to do with like me just like figuring out my queer sexuality and just my queer identity in general and that freedom that I provide myself um, really helped me figure out my identity as a queer person so it's very tangled up with that as a part of me um, more to add in the later questions but that's the reason why I got into <laughs> like I'm becoming more of a polyamorous person Oh, the cheating thing we <laughs> talked about. Yeah, yeah, we talked about pretty this pretty extensively. Yeah. Um, another thing, I think a big thing is that the goal everyone secretly wants to be monogamous. I think that's a huge one that I've seen yeah. that the end goal isn't to be like to have loving relationships and to continue these loving relationships with people. It's at the end of the day, I'm like, especially like in Western and American culture, it's I am doing this and eventually I'll find the right person who actually does fulfill all my needs. Yeah. And I think that's a really dangerous and honestly harmful to people who are long-term polyamory like, who have multiple relationships and continue like sustain them for years and years and yeah. attempt to do them for an entire lifetime it's not saying like again the competition thing i'm very big on not big on i'm very against <laughs> it's like no there's not just one person that's right for you mm -hmm. yeah. or uh, there might be for some people but for others it might not be the same and you are not allowed to pass that judgment at least in my opinion to say yes you are just like me you want one person just the way i do i mm -hmm. feel like that's very i don't know very like small-minded i guess yeah, I haven't ran into that um, actually so far, but there are a lot of the, the idea that, you know, um, at least so far people that I've talked to have, have sort of accepted that um, that I'm not just like secretly pining for like the one person, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which is good because like I sort of fundamentally reject that idea mm -hmm. that there is one person out there, like one individual person out there for any of us, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, some of the, the misconceptions that I've really seen uh, that have been frustrating have been this idea that because I'm ethically non-monogamous, it means that I'm not looking for commitment, that I'm not looking mm -hmm. for yeah. um, something long-term. Mm -hmm. And like, that's just sort of a fundamental, um, just, it's fundamentally wrong, right? And I think, to me, it sort of comes back to what I've heard described before as, um, as sort of a toxic monogamy culture, right? Not that monogamy is bad in and yeah. of itself, but like, you look at any movie, you look at any television show, right? How many monogamous couples do you see, right? They're almost yeah. exclusively monogamous couples that we mm -hmm. see. And anytime there's a, like an, an ethical non-monogamous couple or, or triad or something, yeah. right? It's always framed as sort of a joke. Mm -hmm. And so one of the misconceptions that I really see is like that it's not a serious relationship, right? And that's sort of reinforced by the media, right? That, oh, these relationships aren't serious relationships when they can be like, they're really, really, they are very serious and they're sometimes much harder to balance and navigate than monogamous relationships are. So, so sort of the, the lack of seriousness um, that the sort of societally, um, you know, most people um, sort of, yeah, just view ethical non-monogamy or polyamory as not serious. Yeah. And I think people get the definitions mixed up as well. Like yeah. Because of misconception. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know like the full, like, variety of definitions or the way someone could define polyamory but like non-monogamy is basically like the umbrella term right mm -hmm, of like mm -hmm. many different yes. forms of non-monogamy so um most people are kind of confused by like the word polyamory they assume that like if someone identifies as polyamorous it means that they're in like a triad like a yeah. triad is like a uh -huh. relationship where like three people are all in love with each other yeah and mm -hmm. they live together they all sleep in bed together like that could be one of it but um, the definition that I identify with the most is like, oh, polyamorous just means that you are capable or wanting to be in a serious or like 
not that's to be more this year, so it could be anything, but like a relationship, like emotional, mm -hmm. romantic or sexual relationship with someone. A relationship or in which there's some investment, I think is what we're trying to yes, say, right? Uh -huh. Not so serious maybe is the wrong word we've all yeah. but like a, a relationship where there's a lot of investment. Exactly. In it, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um so yeah. yeah. I don't have the dictionary definition to like yeah. <laughs> right now, but. but it is interesting, right? Yeah. So I know some people too who their goal is not to have, a, they don't really want a long term relationship. Mm -hmm. um, they have a series of short term relationships, right? Mm -hmm. They, um, you know, date people for six months, a year, two years, something mm -hmm. like that, right? And yeah. they don't really date multiple people at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but they don't. They, you know, they sort of fundamentally reject the long-term relationship sort of approach, and so that's kind of different, I think, than what many of us yeah. as, uh, up here are, are talking mm -hmm. about. But like, mm -hmm. it's a very legitimate way to look at uh, polyamory or ethical non-monogamy as well, right? right? People who want to sort of be long-term unattached and just be able to kind of live in the moment and do things in the moment. So, right. Um, yeah. So I think though, when you think about like. There's that version, sort of ethical non-monogamy. There are these, you know, non-monogamous versions that are not ethical, where people just want to like have sort of an excuse to like sleep around and cheat. Mm -hmm. But then you also have these very, you know, structured relationships. I think it does create a confusing. Uh, it, it creates a lot of confusion in people who aren't in the community who aren't familiar with the terminology. Right? Yeah. It creates a lot of confusion, which is why we need more conversations like right. this. Mm -hmm. um, and what was I going to say just now? I completely but um what was it oh yeah less of a misconception but more of like just stigma mm -hmm. where like people label um non-monogamous or like polyamorous people as like ragingly sexual which is like first of all mm -hmm. what about it what about yeah. being ragingly yeah first sexual? of all what's real what's wrong with that what's wrong with that yeah. like if someone loves having sex what about it as long as it's ethical as long as it's consensual mm -hmm. um as long as it's safe mm -hmm. um so that's the first response and second of all like not everyone is sexual mm -hmm. there's also polyamorous non-monogamous relationships where sex is not involved asexual mm -hmm. people exist mm -hmm. also because people are um you know sexuality or like sexual activity is like the default so people enforce like this compulsory sexuality to everybody like assuming that everybody who's in, who's in a relationship they have sex with each other mm -hmm. it's not right mm -hmm. not true um, so yeah, those are my two responses to that. Like, yeah. Well, and sometimes people who are like, so when I think back on my like, um, first non-monogamous relationship, uh, right, uh, so my girlfriend at the time, Ray Lee, and her partner, Tyler, uh, they'd been together for four or five years, right, when she would be away at work, like, he, he and I would like land that we would like sleep in bed together, like, we wouldn't do anything, like, we had no direct relationship, mm -hmm. but like, we also had that intimacy, that shared intimacy of you know, we would like, you know, just, I, I don't know, it was, it was, it was a different type of intimacy mm -hmm. than like, I think most people would share. So like, we're not in a relationship directly, but we mm -hmm. kind of are. And so right. there's also, it makes things complicated in that sense where it's yeah. like, it's not even really clear that we have the language, that society has the language to yeah. describe what's going on. It's know? blurring like lines. Yeah. Um, which is like what polyamory well, challenges. It's what, it's what yeah. queerness does too, it, right? Exactly. Queerness sort of, um, it, looks at those ruptures and tries right. to tries to muddle them up and exactly. tries to like complicate things a little bit. Because I'm sure a lot of people have like friends where they're like their best friends but they know they have like this something that is not really best friend like between yeah. each other. But it's not really like a relationship. But it's like mm -hmm. something very intimate and special mm -hmm. that they can't put a name to it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's like sometimes it's not that rigid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or, like mm -hmm. shouldn't really be defined or labeled. So Yeah, I feel like the thing with labels is like even talking about polyamory, you were like, there's really no set definition. So exactly. if someone tells you they're polyamorous, like, yeah. Yeah. you don't 100% even know what right. they mean, like just with that label. Yeah. Right. And I feel like because of that, sometimes even trying to put things in a label can just be frustrating. Because yeah. exactly. then it's like, well, what if I change my mind and then I have to say this new label? And then it's like, yeah. oh, but my relationship right now, it isn't, doesn't fit into the label I usually use. Yeah. And it's just like, but I want people to know who I am and I want them right. to know my experiences. And I feel like we get very like yeah. caught up in this I don't know, almost like this announcement type thing. Yeah. Instead yeah. of just focusing on the relationships with the people we have. So like yeah. obviously at the end of the day, like if I go home, I'm not gonna try to explain this to my mom, I never will. <laughs> <laughs> but if I do, like her her viewpoint is never gonna be exactly the relationship I have with like my partners. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It'll just yeah. never mm -hmm. get to that point. But I just it's like I don't know, I feel like you as long as you focus on your relationships, as long as you are happy and you feel comfortable, I think that's always 
the goal. I, that should be the goal of every single relationship, regardless if it's monogamous or non-monogamous. And I feel like a lot of the time people get caught up in what the label should look like, especially especially in heteronormative relationships. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. If me, my boyfriend <laughs> sitting over there. <laughs> so, but I think that's when the label gets really like, oh, my boyfriend should yeah. do this, this, this for me. But then with queerness, yeah. it's like, is there a role actually that we have now? But some yeah, people are exactly. like, yes, there is. And we're like, no, yeah. there's definitely not. That's the point right. of queerness. Yeah. And I feel like that's like the beauty in it, that it's really just about what it is, not what we yeah. call it. Well, something I want to kind of add to what's been being discussed here is like, I think one of the um, problems that we have with this, right, is we we live in a culture uh, in a society, I think just as humans, we like to classify things, right? We like to define things. We like to come up with definitions. And we sort of have these opposed definitions of monogamy and non-monogamy. And we expect that there is like a clear boundary between them, right? But I was talking uh, about six months ago with one of my uh, friends who who is monogamous. And I was, you know, kind of was talking about the virtues of non-monogamy, and I was like, yeah, you can have your primary partner, but wouldn't it be nice, like, if both of you, both of you can acknowledge your attractions to other people, maybe, you know, hook up with other people from time to time? Yeah. And she was like, oh yeah, but that, but that's not non-monogamy, that's still monogamous. And I'm like, wait a minute, but how? But yeah. how? So like, okay, so I'm like, well, well, where is the boundary then, right? Where is the boundary for, like, where monogamy, like, this person identifies as monogamous, but still would be okay with, like, you know, um, with with having sex with other people and with their partner doing that. And I'm like, well, to me, that's sort of, you're really ethically non-monogamous. And so I think another problem is, right, trying to figure out, like, uh, going back to queerness, right, queerness tries to interrogate binaries, right? Mm-hmm. And so I think one thing that we're kind of doing here is showing that there's, like, there are no binary definitions of monogamous and non-monogamous. Yeah. yeah. I like that a lot. Um, I think it kind of, like, segues into our fourth question. <laughs> Why non-monogamy? So this is a non-monogamy agenda. Just kidding, I'm not forcing it on you, but I'm so providing a perspective. Think right? about Maybe it. Maybe if something... What would you, so if an advocacy organization that yeah. was advocating for non-monogamy. I've done a lot of like gay agenda stuff, and I think I'm retiring from that. Like, like we could like move further, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, for me, it's like very, um, lately how I've been like my relationship with like non-monogamy is kind of like very almost philosophical kind of just like it's intertwined with like everything like my emotional being my spiritual being it just makes so much sense mm-hmm. um it's just like it's such a ch- it challenges me as a person as a human being to open up my compassion a little bit further for not just myself but other people not just my partner but my partner's partner so i'm in a uh, I'm polyamorous. I'm in a non-monogamous relationship with my boyfriend, who is um, queer, and we're both queer. Um, I'm pan, and it's just like at first we were like a bit hesitant. It was very hard because we were starting this together. Um, I was kind of like encouraging him to kind of like, okay, this makes sense because like I know you enjoy um, being with men as well, and I'm a baby gay and I want to go out with more women or like more non-binary people um it's like being monogamous just does not work it's so restrictive Mm -hmm. so we had like such a tough like tough but like very meaningful conversation where I told him like okay so this is like the reasoning like I feel like you deserve pleasure in many forms there are certain pleasures that other people can provide to you that I can't, and it's the same, it's the same vice mm-hmm. versa. And then you being in a relationship with another person or like engaging sex with another person does not diminish who I am. And that was something that was very hard for me to arrive to because I have jealousy myself. Mm-hmm. So jealousy is like very hard to deal with. It's mm-hmm. like sometimes it pops back up. Sometimes on some days you're like, oh yeah, I'm fine, but then so like the next day you're like, oh, maybe he's having more fun with this other dude. You know, it's like. But that's like the thing that I'm confronted, like I, I confront myself with, or like I challenge myself to like deal with. It's like, this is not about him, this is about you um, having issues with yourself or feeling insecure. It's like, believe, like if you trust this man, know that he loves you and, mm-hmm. and that does not diminish with the number of partners he has. So it's a lot of like internal work. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Also because I like to believe that like, there's so much beauty in sharing your partner with another person. It's like knowing that my partner is able to bring joy or bring pleasure to another person as well and being able to like let go of that and feel mutual 
like satisfaction or like a feeling of like fulfillment is great because it's like I want to let go of like oh I own this person mm -hmm. and he's he can only satisfy me when it's like oh, really should I really be like that mm -hmm. um there's a lot to share in this world like there's a lot of love to share so mm -hmm. it was something that I'm I'm enjoying like the thought like I'm entertaining that thought a lot lately so how about you guys. Um, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> why and what does it mean to yeah, you? Like, why I think is like a really big one for me. Well, as, for, as of right now, I am in a monogamous relationship. Sorry, <laughs> but why? Like as Wafa said, like I think as people we need to be able to like push our compassion, empathy boundaries, and not see <laughs> competition. Here we go, <laughs> and not mm -hmm. see everyone as, and also be open to possibilities of like what can be different. Because mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of the time we just go along with like societal or cultural expectations of being like, okay, I'm with this one person. As long as I'm with one person, I'm gonna be happy. Yeah. Like as long as I'm with the perfect person, I'll be happy. And if, if that ever, if that happens for you, great. Congratulations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But for some people, like like if you are happy being non non monogamous, I feel like you should definitely try it. And see, because if you are happy that way, like, why live your life? Why force yourself to conform yeah. and be like, I, I have to, like, if I'm not X, Y, Z, I'm not happy. Like, mm -hmm. just listen to yourself. And at the end of the day, like, if you're like, oh, I kind of want to try it, go ahead. Like, live your life. And then if you're happier, I think every, I think as long as, if the happier one person is, I think the happier we all are. Mm -hmm. Unless it, unless you're happy with cheating. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe don't do that. If you like the secrets, that's, I don't know, that's you. Maybe you'll find someone who's cool with that. Maybe there's maybe that's an option too. Yeah, maybe there's some role play or something, who some kink oh, yeah. or something, you know? Yeah, yeah who sure knows? Or yeah. like, uh, what is it? Cucking? Oh yeah. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. You never know. Uh, no, but that's that's why I like to have these conversations like this. You know, my friends like I don't know. I think they're like I never shut up about ethical non monogamy. Get a couple of drinks in me, and I'm I'm out of the bar, and I'll just talk to my you know blabber on and on and on to my friends about the the virtues of ethical non monogamy. But I think that you know it's mostly because as I, I mentioned a little bit earlier, you know we're just sort of force-fed in the society and, and you know, at least in, in the U.S., like, we're force-fed this idea that monogamy is the one true virtuous way to be in a relationship. And so I think, you know, if you are considering, you know, that, oh, maybe it's, you know, just kind of prying open the door and thinking, like, oh, maybe everything I've been told so far about, you know, how virtuous monogamy is isn't really, like, ideal for me, it's not really what I truly believe, mm -hmm. um, then hopefully, you know, conversations like this can maybe help open the, open the door a little bit further for right. people to kind of experiment, to explore, and to not necessarily act on it, but to, like, learn a little bit more and think mm -hmm. through what would it mean for me to be in a non-monogamous relationship or something. Because yeah. really, you know, one of the things that, um, that I've learned the most from it is really about how to be an active communicator. So I come from a family where um, active communication is not taught, where if there are problems, you sweep them under the rug, you wait 24 hours, everybody goes back to their corner, yeah. and then you come back together and you're a family again, right? And right. so I never learned how to actively and healthfully communicate. And in non-monogamy has forced me to do that because to be ethical in it, you have to be able to communicate clearly, right? right? You have to be able to understand the needs of the other person. Like for an example, um, I uh, don't really feel jealousy in ethical non-monogamous relationships. If I'm with somebody and I know that that we're partnered, mm -hmm. I'll see see that I can see them with other people. Like I've met my partners out on dates before, like mm -hmm. with other people, and like it's it's fun. Um, that's just not something that I feel. But I and I've had to grapple with what is it like for my partner to actually feel that to be jealous, right? When I'm not. Because I can say, like, oh, there's no reason why, why are you jealous? There should be no reason why, because I'm we're together. So, like, from my perspective, there's no reason for them to feel jealousy. So I've had to, like, really understand the needs of another person in a way that I would never be confronted with were I in a monogamous relationship. Mm -hmm. And it's hard. It's difficult, right? Yeah. The interpersonal, the, the personal growth, like, that is required uh, in that is just way more than I've experienced in most other facets right. of my life. Yes. So, yeah. And I'm sure it brought you and your partner closer because of that, right? it, it did. I mean, it, not necessarily in the relationship, but, like, she's my best friend. So, like, you know, we've been split up for four years or something now, and, like, she's still my bestie. So, like, the fact yeah. that, you know, we, you know, and I think part of it has to do with that, that level of communication, that level right. of trust that eventually did develop, even though some of that trust developed more after right. the breakup than it did during the relationship. But I mean, that's also another thing about ethical, ethical non-monogamy, right? You don't have to be in a relationship to like kind of experience the direct benefits of it, right? It, yeah. it 
is kind of a way of viewing life mm -hmm. that can draw you closer to people um, just in general. I don't know if I explained that well, but... No, yeah. Oh. No, I didn't. No, yeah, no, I, I, I say that's the following. I'm like, I'm like, before I say yes, I know. Okay. No, it is like, no, you, yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, you're, you've been indoctrinated into the Wisconsin culture. No, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, and I would like to like add one more answer to the fourth question, like as to why. is because like, sometimes you just, a fact that I need to embrace more. It sounds terrible at first, but it'll sound better when I explain. Sometimes you're just not satisfied with one person. Like one person oh, does yeah. not, it's not really. It's not really. You're not really happy with that, with that person all the time, or like in multiple different situations. Yeah, human it's beings like, are annoying. I know. <laughs> it's like sometimes like pe people are individuals, are like unique individuals. You can expect uh -huh. people to be molded to be the person that you want them to be as your lover. Uh -huh. So like for instance, so like my primary partner, my boyfriend. He's big into house music initially. I didn't like it, but then I started liking it. So now it's not a problem. But like he doesn't like pop music. So I'm like, I want a lover who would go to concerts with me and will have a cute time and will get sexy to pop music. Mm -hmm. But like, maybe my partner doesn't really enjoy pop music and I can't force it on him. So mm -hmm. it's like, mm -hmm. maybe you gotta look for a better person, you know? So mm -hmm. it's like, and that's like one example. Or like, maybe your partner is not an artistic person, but you feel like you need to, you as a romantic person want to experience romance through art, by right, through art making. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the partner you have does not enjoy art. So that's another reason for you to like, okay, maybe like I could look for that like joy from somebody else and that does not diminish your partner. Mm -hmm. As long as you communicate that to yourself and the other person, like your partner that you're dating, like, hey, me enjoying my time with another person, doing things that I can't do with you does not diminish your value to me. And communicating that and making sure that you are genuine, like unless you're not. Like, if you're not genuine, like you have to think about it. Like, yeah, like you have to confront yourself. But but it's also good, right? So I've yeah. heard so many monogamous relationships where like one part of the couple they, they go and do something with, with their partner that they don't actually want to do. Yeah. They do it because they feel obligated to do right. it. And I'm like, so the other virtue is you don't have to do the things you don't want to do. Exactly. Right? You don't have to go to the you to the pop to concert or something, partner. right? Yeah. If you don't like pop music, yeah. don't go. Mm -hmm. Just you know, and like you can do the things then. It it creates less resentment and write more space for you to then go do the things with your partner that right. you both like doing right. and you don't feel like you're you know maybe drained from some yeah. experience you didn't actually want to do yeah like respect you know? your partner's autonomy like let yeah. them be who they are don't change it mm -hmm. unless it's something that harms you like you know something that you can compromise but it's like most of the time people have different personalities and interests and they like, just yeah. gotta work around it but it requires trust though right yes mm -hmm. trust so important yeah. yes i think that's a, i think that's the biggest thing people are like oh i could never i can never trust my partner enough for to be like in an ethical mind when i i'm like some of you don't trust your partners now yeah. and so, you should uh, okay, should so why do that, i just don't understand why you'd be in a relationship with that's someone if you thing. don't trust them that's like, definitely like they're like oh like but i think he would do this then so he doesn't so you don't think he respects you then, sorry yeah. you're saying him because you know who you are ladies <laughs> i just have any of my friends watched this? It's fair. Hey. Say him, yeah. Like, mo for the most part, yeah. Like, yeah. Hey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 but that's the thing. Like, people will stay with people. Like, yeah. it, in relationships, it's very common to be like, you have to stick through it no matter what. This person can treat you like dirt, treat you like garbage. But, you know, maybe they're a good person at the end of the day. I can and change him. I can change him. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Hey. I'm going to send this to my friends. Like, I, I shouted you out. No. <laughs> but, yeah, I feel like that's a huge thing. Like, it's like, okay, first, when you're single, it's fine. When you're quote-unquote single and before getting into a monogamous relationship, it's fine if you, like, run game. You can talk to whoever you want. Yeah. You can, like, you can treat people. Sometimes you can treat people horribly. I'm not going to lie. Like, and people will be like, oh, no, it's okay. Like, you guys aren't together. Like, the label's not there, so it's okay. Like, they don't have feelings. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the thing is, like, that's never true. No. Like, at the end of the day, as someone who has like casual dating, casual dating by the way is not the same as polyamory. I feel like that's a thing oh, yeah, that has to be said. Yeah. But like as someone who has like casually dated, like it was jokes with my friends, like oh yeah, like you can go see this guy today, go see the other guy tomorrow, and it's like you don't have to tell them because you're not together, right? Mm -hmm. And but then it's like, oh, like once you once you cross that line a bit, oh I can be secretive and like it doesn't matter what that does to the other person. Mm -hmm. I feel like that completely changes your perception of who a person is like what a person is like yeah. you're not seeing them as oh this is someone i care about yeah. <laughs> or like this is someone who has feelings like you just see them as like oh, i'm just getting i'm just using them to like get off or whatever or, yeah. like, for a little validation yeah. here and they're like mm -hmm. that's all they are to me and i feel like the thing is with ethical non-monogamy is like you understand that that's a person and maybe you need yeah. them for different things like oh i want to go to a pop concert with this person but it's yeah. not like oh i'm gonna go to a pop concert with this person but hide it from my other friend because I know it's gonna hurt their feelings 
but it shouldn't hurt their feelings because we're not really together. Like I feel like the non-monogamy label puts, or the ethical non-monogamy label puts it like, I still have a responsibility to you because you're still a person. Just because you're not my primary partner, like that yeah. doesn't mean you're just like some rando who I'm gonna cast card onto the street later. It's all about proactive communication, right? And I don't think we're taught, at least in the United States, right, in, in the society that I've grown up in, we're not taught to be proactive communicators, right? To try to address problems before they crop up, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think what that does is, right, it, it creates, it, it's easy to justify your behavior, right? Oh, well, we're not really in a relationship, so you know, I don't have to right. treat them well, right? And it's like, no, like, y you should be open and honest and truthful. Yeah. Like, there's there's no reason to sort of hide what you're doing, right? Yeah. Unless you're mm -hmm. trying to be unethical, sure. there's no reason to hide it. This, yeah, this, like, behavior for relationships does not just apply to people who are in non-monogamous relationships. I feel yeah. like everybody should have that awareness. Yeah. We've talked about quite a bit yeah. of the challenges so yeah. far, you know. Um, I mean, I think the core challenge, right, is just communicate, like, communication, mm -hmm. right? It's really yeah. challenging sometimes to, yeah. it's scary to communicate yeah. so mm -hmm. clearly and so, like, um, openly and honestly with another human being. Mm -hmm. um, at least for, for me it is. I've had to, that's one thing I've had to overcome, right? It's just hard to communicate that clearly and openly. We're, we're not trained to do that as human beings, at least at least I wasn't. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know, what, what do you all think? Um, for me, it's definitely like, I guess a cultural thing maybe, mm -hmm. like finding partners who would be open to being polyamorous. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not gonna lie, like I think in like queer spaces, at least here in New England Madison, like, not gonna lie, they're like, especially like white to me like I'm like they're very like I don't know like culturally like, I'm usually really different than the people like in like queer spaces and then even to go like to the point of polyamory like I don't know like then it's usually people who are very very different than me and it's fun to like try it but sometimes it's like oh like this person who you really like might not be into it might oh, not yeah. be into it and then you're like Oh, like I have to be honest about what I want, and then it's like, uh, no, sorry. Well, the community here is so small, right? I mean, yeah. I swipe through dating apps all the time, and it's like, I, I don't know. So I'm from the West Coast. I'm a coastie. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm not mm -hmm. from the Midwest, and so there, it's just a very, very different experience mm -hmm. out here. And so, like, I find so few people that I'm interested in swiping on, mm -hmm. right? And then it's like, but I also have to think about all these other things, like ethical non-monogamy, right? Like, if I swipe on somebody, right, are at what exactly. you know, like. <laughs> I don't know, it just really limits the um, pool of available, you know, right. of, mm -hmm. of people to be, you know, flirty with or whatever, so. Mm -hmm. I just recently tapped into, like, a community of people who mm -hmm. are queer and polyamorous, so that's been great, but mm -hmm. it just means that maybe a lot of people have dated each other. <laughs> I mean, that happens in the queer community, though. Like, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's, 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 that's the <laughs> definition but it's like, that's the thing. It's of like, queers. Like, at some point, we have to embrace the fact that, like, okay, it's fine to share partners. That's, like, yeah. Yeah. Part, of the, part of the journey, part of the story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, that's sort of the queer thing, right? Like, that's, yeah. that's like, broader, like, when we think about, like, queer family, right? And, like, you know, chosen family and stuff. Like, mm -hmm. there's a lot of intermixing of relationships yeah. uh, throughout time, and, right. and that creates, you know, stronger bonds in some ways. Very true. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I think like another fear or like challenge is definitely like, how it's perceived by the outside world. Yeah. At the end of the day, like not everyone in my circle is like queer or polyamorous. Like not even most people in my circle are queer or polyamorous. And so I think it's like explaining to them and then not having them be like, oh, like are you sure? Because they mm -hmm. all like everyone has their own baggage and like trust issues and relationships right. that sometimes they can't understand. They're like, oh, maybe you're comfortable with something yeah. that like they wouldn't be comfortable with, yeah. and like even like the idea of like dating somebody queer. Like it's mm -hmm. sometimes it's like, oh, are you? Are you sure? Like, are you sure? Like, if you're with bif like bisexual, are you sure? Like, mm -hmm. you never know. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. The thing is, some of these girls' boyfriends are DL, and they don't know. <laughs> so either way, like, yeah. something like that could happen, and it's a better to be open and honest about that. Right. But I think some people are, like, nervous. They're more nervous to confront the truth than they are to just, like, live with a lie, mm -hmm. if that yeah. makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I think... I feel like, like that radical honesty and openness of admitting, like, yeah, maybe I do want to talk to other people, like... A lot of those, a lot of people in non like monogamous relationships do have those head, have those thoughts in their head already. Mm -hmm. But it's just mm -hmm. like something you're like hiding from your partner, or you don't want to say it because it'll hurt your partner's feelings. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, in a way, there's you know lies of omission are a thing. Mm -hmm. And so maybe you're not being, if you feel like if you can't be 100% honest with your partner about who you are, you're doing a disservice to yourself. Exactly. But it's like I don't know. I think even though we're talking about challenges, I think one of the best 
pros is at the end of the day you you're not going to be people pleasing mm -hmm. you're not going to be sitting there and lying and be like oh yes. no i'm actually okay with that because i can go find somebody who no, <laughs> like yeah. i don't know who can take care of this other thing for me and it's not going to be a problem for either of us because we have this communication mm -hmm. yeah. so yeah. yeah and maturity yeah yeah um one thing that i feel like was a challenge is like mostly like talking to people like to your partner or partners about it and like having like a solid conversation and typically I'm the one to kind of initiate it and I'm lucky enough to have a partner who listens and willing to engage mm -hmm. it's just that to break through that weirdness that like scariness of like oh why are mm -hmm. we suddenly talking about rela our relationship why like why are you asking me about my sexuality like if I'm seeing other yeah. people it's like making sure that you know how to like bring it up bring it at the right time talk about it when both of you are like in, a, in the right headspace I don't know if it's like the closing statement, but like, it's fine to experiment, you know what I mean? Yes. Like we were just talking about a little bit earlier, like, oh, if you're not sure and you don't want to be like, oh, I'm polyamorous, like definitively, that's mm -hmm. fine. Just like, but if you're like, oh, I might want to give it a go. And if you discover like, that's not for you, it's not what you're looking for, that's okay. Like you tried something new and you figured about a part of yourself. Don't think of it as in like, oh yeah, I'm going to try it. I'm going to get this label and my whole life is going to yeah. change and the people I know are going to change and I'm going to have to tell my family. Maybe just think of it as a one-time experience, and then if you like that experience, yeah. do it again. And, then and you can be ethically non-monogamous with somebody and still be mostly monogamous for a large chunk of time, yeah. right? It doesn't mean that you have to be seeing other people. It just means that, like, that's part of your identity. It's part yeah. of your approach to the relationship yeah. mm -hmm. is that it's, it's um, something that's possible, right? Mm -hmm. So you can, right, if, if you're in an ethically non-monogamous relationship, um, you might try dating somebody else like a second or third person at some point and you might think oh I just wasn't ready for that and I need to pull back right mm -hmm. and so it doesn't mean that like you have to be open to everything all the time it could mean that like you're in a relationship you experiment you, you try seeing somebody else and you're just like oh I'm just not ready to see somebody right now yeah. mm -hmm. you know I don't I don't have time I don't have emotional capacity right. I don't have whatever mm -hmm. so like it, it's not like some path dependent thing where like okay now I'm ethically non-monogamous and I have to do all of the things all of the time it's like yeah. no, no no not really whatever you need to do yeah exactly just do that yeah Relationships are never easy. <laughs> That's yeah, the one yeah. thing. Never, never <laughs> easy, yeah. Monogamous, non monogamous, people are going to get their feelings hurt. Yeah. People will be crying. You're going to feel insecure. They're going to feel yeah. insecure. Yeah. It's, it all sucks. And you don't have to be some of the time. If you don't want to be. It's yeah. like it's not. Or you could be alone, and that might uh -huh. be better if I'm being honest. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it feels like it could never be better. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Oh. All right. I think we're all good. Good yeah. conversation, yeah. Stay queer, Madison. <laughs> why, why, why don't we end that with like all the videos of that? Cool. Yeah, that's great. Stay.